Coach Tofa. What's going on everybody? Coach Topher here and welcome to my video tips and tricks on how to get more setbacks and reactions on Black Ops 3 gun game. Now the first part of this video will be all about Black Ops 3, but in the second half of this video I'm going to give you tips and tricks that will work for any of the other gun games, Black Ops, Black Ops 2, Advanced Warfare, and Ghosts. They'll work on all of them. Now the reason I'm making this video is because I've had a lot of people ask me how I'm able to find microphones and get reactions in this game. And I'll tell you right up front, it is not easy. It's a grind. It takes a lot of work. Two of the major drawbacks to Black Ops 3 is that the mics are terrible and there are not that many of them. So when you do get into a gun game and you're looking to set somebody back, what are some of the helpful things that you can do to actually get that setback? For me, there are basically four different ways that you can do that. First of all, you can run up and get somebody from behind. Now, while that is obviously the easiest way to do it, it's not that simple because you're not gonna run into too many people who have their back turned to you and who are not able to hear you coming. So take those where you can get them. The second way, and this is obviously a lot harder, is to just run up and butt them twice with your gun, and that is pretty hard to do because you may be able to get that first butt in, but getting that second one <laughs> is not very easy. Now, it doesn't always work, but it's nice when it does. I think sliding to the side is a big part of that, getting out of the way of their gun, which is, <laughs> it sounds pretty obvious, but not a lot of people do it. People will still stand right in front of them and keep trying to do it, <laughs> including myself. Now, the other two methods that I use are the jump, shoot, butt with the gun, and the slide, shoot, and butt with a gun. Now, neither one of them are easy, and you can see some pretty good examples of what I'm talking about right here as you're watching it on the screen. It just takes a lot of practice and a lot of luck. Now, with both the slide and jump, you wanna make sure you're not directly in the line of fire. It's a lot harder with the slide, you're pretty much on a set path, and it's a heck of a lot easier to track you on the ground than it is up in the air. Another thing is, these boards are big on gun game. A lot of them are big. Now, you'll notice that a lot of my setbacks in these games happen on a few boards or in a few certain areas on boards. So when you get into a gun game, it's always gonna to help to have that smaller board. Now, another tip which I really need to use more myself is use the wall running. When I do use that, you can run up on a wall, drop back behind somebody, and get them from the back with one butt, which is nice. I need to do more of it, and also use a wall running to shorten distances to different places on the map, because sometimes it just drops you completely away from the action, and you're a good 10 seconds away from finding somebody. Now, with microphones being so rare in this gun game, make sure that you don't waste time running around trying to set people back who don't have mics. If you see that's not the person you're going after, get away from them and start heading in the other direction to find that person with a mic. One of the things I found really helpful is, as you're in the load screen for a game, look and see who has microphones. It'll show you a little microphone right next to the player on the load screen. And since there are different characters in there, you can tell who's who a lot of the time. There may be two of the same character in the game, but you'll be able to recognize that. You can see the guy's mic lighten up right here, and you'll see I find him, I recognize him, and I set him back. Wow. So once you know who you're looking for in the game with the mic, you can clearly see that that's not that person. Get the hell away and go find that guy. Now here are some basic tips for all gun games and how to get more reactions. And over the years, I've shared these tips with other YouTubers and other friends of mine, and I wanna share them with you guys. And a lot of this may seem like common sense as I'm saying it, but a lot of people don't do it. I hear people all the time, how do you find the mics, coach? How do you find the mics? You have got to grind it out. This is simply a numbers game. I go on Black Ops, Black Ops 2, and I still can find mics. For example, Black Ops has like 320 players in the gun game lobbies. I still find mics. It may take me 15, 20 minutes to find a mic, but I eventually will find them. Sometimes you don't. And after about 20, 30 minutes, if you haven't found anything, get off and get on at a better time. And timing is everything. You really need to pick some good times to play when the most people are online. Don't sit down at two or three in the morning and expect to find a bunch of mics on older games because it's not gonna happen. It may, but you really, really, really have to grind. For me, I usually play around 5.30, 6 o'clock Eastern till about 10, 10.30, maybe 11. And those are on weeknights. Weekends, that tends to go a little longer and you can find more people during the day. But if you're gonna do this, play at the prime times where the most mics will be on. And like I said earlier, this is a numbers game. Get in and out of lobbies as fast as you can. So as soon as you get into that lobby and you see there are no mics, back out get out, move on to another game, move on to another lobby, do it quickly. You can get into about 10 or 15 lobbies in well under a minute. You may get into the same one a few times, but it's gonna cycle through. And just because a lobby has a microphone or two in it doesn't mean that it's active and you shouldn't just join the game. If you've got a microphone on, I suggest quickly flipping the unmute and saying, can anybody hear me? Something along those lines to elicit a response from the other people to say, hey, I have my microphone on, I'm active, and I am gonna be talking. 
most of the time what I look for in a gun game lobby is getting in there and finding at least two microphones where two dudes are already running their mouths and talking shit. Because as soon as I get into a lobby and I hear at least one person running their mouth, acting like an asshole, talking shit to a bunch of people, that's my guy. I'm gonna hang around because if he's that shit talking and that aggressive already just in a pregame lobby, you know he's gonna lose his mind when you set him back. Now the single most important tip that I can give you is to turn off all of your game sounds. What a lot of people don't realize is that myself and a lot of other YouTubers, we play without any sound whatsoever. It makes it a lot harder. But the main benefit to turn off the sounds is that all the reactions you get that are really hard to hear, you can bring into your editing program and jack the volume all the way up. Now if you have your game sounds on, a reaction that's really low in volume, you're not going to be able to bring up because you're going to hear those game sounds over the reaction itself. Now without those game sounds in there, you can jack the volume all the way up and save that clip. Now I have some people say, coach, you should talk more to people in your videos when you're setting them back. And I have some people say, oh, well you shouldn't. And I just want to say this, look, I have a pretty good idea of when I should get on my mic and when I should not. And I can promise you guys this, if I get on my microphone and I start talking crap to somebody or I start saying some stuff, their focus is then going to be on a conversation with me and the reactions stop. And I'll tell you that is true about 90% of the time. So you can either get reactions or you can have a conversation. It's usually not both. Sometimes it is, but that's super, super rare. So if you're looking for those straight up reactions, keep your mic muted for the most part. Don't engage in some big conversation because these people are bitching, coach, coach, man, oh, you're such an asshole. If I jump on there and be like, oh, hey, what's up? It doesn't always go as well because honestly, I end up making friends with people most of the time <laughs> because I'm not on there to be a dick. And if I get on my mic and somebody's not being an asshole, I'm not gonna be an asshole back to them. And before you know it, become friends and you'll see in some of these reactions, especially in Black Ops 3 because my mic is almost always on, I'm talking to them a lot <laughs> and it just ends up being so super friendly and they really don't react a whole lot, or at least not with the same anger because we've got some kind of a bit of a bond. Oh, and this may sound crazy, but if you ever get into a lobby where there's a girl and there's some guy talking to her, he will not leave that lobby. He will not leave that lobby until she leaves, no matter how many times you stab him. I've, I've noticed that, it's ridiculous. These guys want to talk to these girls so bad that they are willing to get set back so many times and they're acting like assholes <laughs> while they're trying to impress this girl. They're throwing hissy fits like five-year-olds. So I don't quite get that. But when I hear some guy hitting on or flirting with some girl, I know that, that lobby should stay active for quite a while. And as long as I stick around, I'm gonna get some good stuff. I hope you found this video helpful, informative, and at least a little bit entertaining. So if you have any tips or tricks for Black Ops 3 gun game or any of the other gun games, make sure to leave them down in the comments. And if there's enough of them, I might just make another video about this. And as always, thanks for watching. Cracking skulls, bitch.